Well, the time have come, I guess, for me to uh, thank King Charles, previously known as Prince Charles. And that's how he feels like, and he's not very outspoken, and he's very, very determined. Uh, he would prove his case, basically, of my being mentally ill. Um, for what he and his family hoped for with his mother, his grandmother, his father, his two sons, broader family, is that obviously I would get um, emotional enough to next to memories on torture they engaged in would have no capacity to properly analyze them um, and even more so just makes a big difference properly communicate them to the world he doubted I would have eventually that I have a capacity to recall everything that these people have done to me and this must have been a family the longest involved family this is a longest involved family in my MK Ultra case if you want to call this genocide MK Ultra case the highest profile MK Ultra case as Donald Trump referred to one as uh, then so be it. Uh, word about Donald Trump, you can see when he's still there. And so, this video is dedicated to very much attention-seeking royal family. He's not the only one who is attention-seeking, eager for attention, uh, Prince Harry stated me, he explained me the issues be behind attention-seeking. Why, basically, they were involved in issues. In a way, they were. These people usually get a positive review. And most of the reviews that you would read on the internet, it would be, uh, King Charles this, Queen Camilla this, uh, Prince Harry, no, Prince Harry these days is a little black shit, uh, but they work on it. it, this stuff is all done in a, such a way that, and don't get me wrong, <laughs> I, I would love to say, I hope, I hope it would all be okay one day, they all come back together and so on, but these are indifferent from Hollywood actors, people. These are this is basically Hollywood, crown of the Hollywood in greater than Great Britain. It's like nothing real about these people. These are this must be like the fakest people on earth. I don't know about anybody more fake than this family here that you see. So, Prince Harry stated to me once, he stated, he explained to me the issue. He wanted me to meet, for me to acknowledge and understand his issue, his logical issue. Um, he mentally became closely associated with Dmitry Medvedev, if you believe it or not. Dmitry Medvedev became his mentor. Uh, he, during MK Ultra, became his. He gave him like an ABC about how he see MK Ultra and so on. And I have to tell you that the two minds were very closely associated with one another when it came to my MK Ultra case. The way they viewed, the way they. Uh, they wanted to portray me as a paranoid schizophrenic. 
it was like uh it was like on a characteristics that um uh, i'm gonna say very professionally done okay very professionally done i am not gonna be describing the characteristics of the schizophrenic schizophrenics um on how psychiatric uh, lexicon book classifies them their symptoms their uh communication expression uh ability to relate to issues i will not go to that because there's no doubt that these people have received complete in and out complete background from real psychiatrists from real psychologists which battalions they had behind them it wasn't one psychiatrist it wasn't two it wasn't three five psychologists they were fucking battalions of people attorneys acting in a background in their best interest and then you have that british what do they say that house it's not a house of represent yeah well somewhat representatives just like in russia you have that duma and so on uh what's the main take about this issue here is pertaining to attention seeking the best that described to me attention seeking from everybody involved in mk ultra it really break me down in a deeper understanding about why they're doing this stuff because i couldn't understand why i mean why me why well i mean i understand that now uh and it was the hardest thing was 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 for me to understand why me why i um i couldn't understand why why the fuck why i why would i be the one chosen to give them the most negative reviews which british royals have anticipated and demanded from me that's the torture that was taking place they demanded through the torture from me the most negative reviews and they did so through intensive torture which literally led me and it kind of angers me into psychiatric hospital in 2012 even into psychiatric hospital because of these people here that you see they wanted a negative reviews at all costs uh and this video because this individual exactly because of the pictures you see right there in front of that hospital where he would take me many times along with him and or camilla would uh where he insisted where he had camilla insist me that i don't like him uh that he was the one who got me that was in 2016 2015 beginning in 2015 2016 who bailed me out of the psychiatric hospital and so on when in fact that is exactly the opposite but the person that gets you inside in there the people who get you inside in there are also the first people who get you out of there uh, actually demand from you the knowledge that they got you out of there it's just too damn bad that i am 52 years old and you see this here let me demonstrate you this here you see this look here this the way it's like you see that like i would see i see this as a doubt you look i remember this shit on the faces of the british royals since i was a baby they doubted me since i was a baby this undermining beating down 
feeling and giving this kind of look. This is what is in my head when I look at these people. You understand? 52 years. 52 years of it. Now let me go back and explain the issue behind the Prince Harry. The Prince Harry stated to me like this, and in which every one of you should remember this. If you learn anything from me, then you should learn this. I couldn't understand why they selected me to give them a negative review. Why me? Why I? There are so many people, and sure enough, I was their biggest supporter. How come the hell I would be the one who would have to become their biggest... Uh, I don't know how you say that properly in English. Enemy. Uh, I am not going to use the term. It's okay. I'm okay with the enemy. Uh, I could not understand possibly why. Why would they choose me for that? And I continue to refute this issue in front of them, even during the torture. I consciously have programmed myself into disbelief. I consciously have programmed myself that because these people, sure enough, did not have any reason to hate me. That is just a part of something they have to do, and they took advantage of it. They took advantage of it. Uh, they presented the whole thing. They presented themselves over the course of the time as the victims of the British public to me, who are compelled to engage in torture against me on behalf of British public. That it is British that demands a torture done on me. Uh, and so it's because of them, for them to stay alive, they would have to do stuff like this that would satisfy British police. Uh, this shit expanded onto the issue of the Russians, etc., etc., etc. And as far as I was concerned, from the world, it might be difficult to understand for some people. It's difficult to understand for some people. Um, from the world where I am. But if you position yourself in a world, in a part of the world where I am from, circumstances in which I grew up, whether I liked it or not, I had to support them. I had to see myself in them. Uh, the lies they gave me, beautiful lies, this might be in Consider as their family member. Consider as son to Queen Elizabeth. Consider as someone between by Charles and Andrew. Someone as <coughs> not by Princess Anne because I hit on I hit, I, I hit it on Princess Anne. And Princess, uh, Prince Edward, to me, it seems so young during MK Ultra. But by Andrew and and uh, Edward was always very nice. So he didn't make me any. <clears throat> he didn't make me any. I just. Um, This too, I was seen, according to their words, as someone between brother, uh, it actually gets worse. And then the Prince Harry and William, in front of the Prince Harry and William on the picture, they insisted me that I'm a crossbreed between the brother and their son because of my age. That is somewhere in between uh, their sons and them. And so, this kind of issues are then uh, so difficult to accept, deal with, 
that is actually impossible to tell. If you come from my background and you've been subjected to this kind of issues, you know, God help you, man, because uh, this shit went on for way too long. Brainwash. And for you to liberate yourself from this mental slavery. It takes very, very unlikely. Very, 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 very unlikely. It takes like your literally jumping out of the skin to become a real you. It's was one of the hardest things, maybe even the hardest thing in MPL for me to accomplish. I am out now. I am now free. Uh, but the suffering I have gone through because of my liberating myself of this mental slavery uh, it's a trouble. It's a very, very big problem for me because I'm a family man. Despite everything, you see, I still have a tendency to stick around with the family and so on and so forth. And so I did so. And so there were extremely difficult issues in my life. When you are subject to MKR truck. It's um, not that I would be, that I would have some kind of uh, personality that would be listed inside of the book of the psychiatrist as uh, maybe uh, infantile, childish, or something like this, dependent on somebody, personality, or something like that. But I don't know. I. Uh, I became attached to these people. I became attached to their strange ways. Just like was the case with my parents. I became attached to this. I, I just, uh, meaning that I started to see them as a family. And uh, these are very, very difficult things to do because, you know, I am just uh, always looking, I always look forward, would love to do something good for somebody. For anybody, you know, I had just a person that that was uh, some people would say naive, but that's not true. The time came when I started to make very serious decisions. Uh, life became so rough that I started to take decisions that these people did not even dream I possibly ever could take, and I started with a family, with the closest family members. That goes to 2006, 2007, when I started to publish my autobiography. It was very, very unlikely that America would read about how, what kind of circumstances I was in Miami throughout the U.S., what basically went on with issues that pertain to my life it, it wasn't likely that this ever would come out because with the part of the world it dictates that publishing something like this if you do you're listed on a dead list basically you're as good as dead don't you even think about publishing some kind of biography about what you creative people maybe would refer to as a domicide genocide um that's crazy. And I also knew that it would take many, many years. I procalculated back then, within the five years, I will finish my project and liberate myself from it. And I was so, so, so wrong about it. You know, that was in 2006. That I procalculated in 2007. I procalculated when I started to write book between life and truth. It's a, it's a free world in a world basically about 
what they advertise in their media about their human rights, about all that stuff, and where exactly what my life was like. They acted like the past never existed, and they continued to run me over in every step of the way. And I said to myself, I'm not going to go without leaving trace about me. And this was the book. All through, it never went into the hard uh, print that made a major landmark on my resume, on my life. Because it gave me, uh, all through it, it took enormous sacrifice to write one, to get myself disciplined enough to, uh, to become basically a writer. Uh, it was a major, major landmark that would mark uh, the beginning of resistance against oppression. So for me to finish, when it comes to Prince Harry, and as I stated, if you ever learn anything from me, learn this. Princess Harry stated, Prince Harry stated to me, The worst publicity, you know, and that's because I was asking him, why do you want me to write about this? Why do you want me to be the one doing this kind of stuff? Why do you want that from me? Similarly to them, it was expected the same from me by Norwegian King Harald. And many other, but not all the kings and queens in this world. Some were actually horrified by this bullshit that British enforced against me. Others become to flirt with idea to get their negative review from me as well. Prince Harris stated me the worst that can happen to you and you should already know this based on the case of your own and he referred to me and my YouTube videos how the video view counters are blocked blogger um, how nobody sees me anywhere and so on the worst thing he stated to me he said you must know you already you should already know that he said to me this is because and that much about attention seeking. And that's because you don't get a review of any kind. It's basically when everybody, when you're not seen anywhere, that is the worst thing that can happen to you. Do you understand me what I'm saying? He stated to me better to get, he further stated to me. Better to get a negative review, better to get, uh, better to be criticized, better to be seen as whatever in the media when you are so big, when you are so big. Prince Harry, just like his father, uncle, brother, cousins, is a megalomaniac. If he feels that he is so giant, that he is so big, that he is so fucking giant big, that even the statue of Joseph Stalin, which was placed by the Soviet Union and the Soviet bloc countries, was just nothing compared to them. They feel they are like a center of the universe. That basically is why they figure out that any kind of review even if it's whatever kind of review, is better than no review. And I earlier stated to you, these people usually get a positive review, of course, because they have battalions of the so-called journalists with whom they interact ongoingly, writing news. They see themselves in very often, if not 99% of the time when it comes to 
mainstream media. The news they coordinate and contemplate on to be published exactly according to their expectations. The British royal family is job, British royal family's employment consists about 75% of the work job they do is basically is based on interaction with the media, in case you did not know that. So these are people that are completely about the media. Then those 25% is about internal, all kinds of affairs, whatever they do, and so on and so forth. But this is 75% of the job. 75% of the job is to have all these publishers, journalists next to them. You're always going to have photographers accompany them. Uh, sometimes even using a silicon masks, I believe, I believe, so they can get the job done the way they want it, in a way they want it. They always have people, they always have journalists, they always have people accompanying them wherever they go, whatever they do. Sit with them. Uh, before sitting with them, going thoroughly with a psychiatrist, psychologist, over the issues they seem to them are interesting and would like to have them published therefore after discussion in certain way through the so-called journalists for those of you that did not know and so it becomes evident from what i have told you so far that the british family demanded from me a review of a paranoid schizophrenic mentally ill, deranged person, uh, somebody who they anticipated through the use of extensive torture, and as I mentioned to you, <laughs> was even thrown inside a psychiatric hospital to get some more extra feel on suffering. So they don't recognize suffering, by the way. That's how they wanted me. Uh, that's also the type of the person uh, in this great uh, variety, in this, in this great uh, pool of writers, views, they also wanted to have uh, a reviewer who is mentally ill and would eventually match uh, something, um, you know, something like that. Well, what I told you right now is something I possibly could never, ever uh, imagine uh, in my life would, uh, would uh, I would have to go through. Uh, Slovenian police eventually uh, used this type of stuff to terrorize me, horrify me, molest me. stress me out with, causing me trauma, traumatize me during MK Ultra. They did this kind of issue. Not directly, they never suggested that I am like bottom of the shit that this world have seen to these people. But just like giving us signals like in a distance. So that the feel when the time comes when you realize how the people see you in reality is more grim, it's more dark, it's even it becomes even worse implicated in all these circumstances they created, which surrounded foremost health circumstances, uh, would produce definitely sure enough it would produce with a what psychiatrist Peter Kopsch whom they have hired for the job, insisted that if the person has a liver failure or whatever, uh, lack, suffers from the lack of sleep, whatever, uh, that that is part of schizophrenia, uh, mental illness, and so on and so forth. Uh, and Or if suffering from physical injuries, pain, uh, is in delirium due to those that too should be equaled with a mental state of mind, mental illness, 
not the Spanish state of mind, but mental illness such as schizophrenia. It is something he discussed with American psychologists, psychiatrists who declined him this type of uh, <laughs> um, they declined to accept the views that the people that would. And they did this stuff not to help, but to make me feel even more abused, even more taken advantage of. Don't worry about it. They do this stuff. They help. People help when they want to help. And people discuss the issues when they want to fuck you even more. And you come to conclusions when they want to fuck you even more based on response you get, based on what you have gone through, what happened, what type of degree of crime, what exactly. Uh, and then you have the idea of pretty much whom you have dealt with. I'm going to put it this way. So better to have even negative review. Better to be seen if you are so big, right? Better to be seen uh, even by somebody. You must be also seen by somebody like this or whatever than not to be seen at all because it's like a free space, basically. It's like a free advertisement for them. These people definitely wanted to be on it. Uh, and I'm not going to say, so be it. I am not going to say, so be it. I'm not going to say this. I told you this is not easy for me to accept. It was difficult. It was one of the hardest, if not the hardest things for me to accept. Therefore, I had no friends, really, during MK Ultra that would be, like, on a top positions, like, on a top, uh, you know, of, of any kind of social pyramid. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you something. When you realize the stuff I told you about, you no longer are all alone because you are with your sanity, finally. When you rely on something that doesn't exist out there, uh, I'm not going to say that God is not with you. God always is, is with the truth. But definitely, uh, when you acknowledge things for what they are, you just, um, you grow. You start to grow faster. And it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult process. And you never should cheat. You never should convince yourself there is something that is not. And all your um, spoznania, and that's, I'm not translating you properly this into English. Your, when you come to your, uh, you know, for your acknowledgments, whatever you come to acknowledge, they should always be fruitful. They should always be done on your memory, on your investigation, on your work, on your, not on your feelings, but on a thorough facts about never on your feelings how you feel about it. Never fucking go about how you feel about it. These are the words that I heard over and over British royals using with one another, communicating, Charles, you know, William, how you feel about it. And fuck this. There is no such thing like how you feel about it because remember, those are the consequences you're going to have to live with. And if those are the consequences you're going to have to live with, they better be real because it's a long fight ahead of you. And that fight is not going to go through for you in absolutely any way unless you are truthful to yourself, unless you are factual to yourself. And you have to be mercilessly factual, truthful to yourself for you to... I'm not going to say declare anything, but let's just say depart on that type of trail, on that type of road. And don't get me wrong, uh, I do not depart on any kind of revolutionary road, any kind of uh, what uh, could be misrepresented or seen as or felt by somebody as uh, 
oh well you know he's trying to uh, deplete us from uh, from crown and so on those are very 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 often concerns of Prince Charles now King Charles uh, Prince William Andrew and so on that I'm going to wreck them <laughs> The truth about it, I already told you, will not repeat myself. No, I am not interested in uh, <laughs> getting myself in between their family matters, some the subject that I opened. And I did not finish. I am not the person who would go out there and uh, would instigate. This is also, as they believe, that will also be against, you know, family member against family member. Probably the last one on this planet you will see doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> Whatever that means in their world where they obsessively from where they obsessively entered mine and have literally incited mother father against me family members against me severely this is simply not my style this is simply something i do not adhere to because i believe that a people of such a great status not great people I deem these people are trash. I deem these people are garbage. But they have a status. They have a status. They have a social status. And so I deem that going after the people with such great status, proving the world about who and what these people are, requires from me to be exactly what I stated. Honest, truthful to myself, without taking absolutely any side. That's all. I think I I, uh, I did this video fairly well. Um, what you see right there on the picture reminds me of Camilla Charles. Prince William. Uh, Prince William started to instigate in 2014 about the possibility of Charles having a problems with a the prostate. They started to do frantically. They started to do research in 2013, 2014. Uh, it was. Prince William, who panicked about it, and they would do research, they would research, and uh, he was all, he, he completely lost his mind, according to his words, out of his mind, basically, because, of course, this is his father, it's a normal thing, and finally gained his peace in 2014, that, in fact, it was not a cancerous problem with what appears was a prostate. Um, these people also see physicians ongoingly. They also go and they meet physicians ongoingly. The visits to these people oftentimes for me felt like I only came, uh, I only was hijacked to them to spend time with them, with them at the hospitals. That's another issue. That I had a problem with during MK Ultra, and I was severely criticized for it. We would continue to visit these hospitals where Charles was using me as a form of entertainment. That's exactly why. So oftentimes, and I started to feel this that he is using me to have his time pass him faster in the hospitals. Uh, there's something quite I wasn't happy about it because you see contrary 
I believe that I should spend good time with them, see them a little bit, and so on and so forth, feel them. And that's exactly what they were doing before they would kick me out again into another picture of MK Ultra, uh, where I would be tortured, whatever, if they did not directly involve in it, they did not involve it. It was a different thing. This was like a top of pyramid. They were using other people to do stuff, to do me bad stuff. Then they would relate themselves to the bad stuff through uh, exampling them, exampling whatever issues they would have printed on the internet. And would definitely be subject to seen uh, to the circumstances of the torture. This is the system they used. So uh, they use a variety of different systems, but I'm just trying to give you a picture idea about how these people do that stuff. And so uh, in 2015, uh, Prince Charles uh, at insistence of Prince Harry Prince Harry was the one who insisted and insisted and insisted that he had to have this stuff done that he's losing his mind if his dad is not going to do this and so on in 2015 2016 we would continue to come to this hospital but it, his procedure what probably was a prostate cancer related procedure must have been done by 2017 and no later. Because I know that Prince William was losing his mind all the way. He would not fucking give me. Can you imagine this? He would not even give me a, a complete statement uh, and explain to me how his father is. Yeah? He complained about all the time about how I am. Um, I only care about myself, which were the words repeated by my mother on at least one million times throughout my life. Uh, and not about them, not about his father. I don't care about them and so on. Uh, and when I would ask questions, I would never get the answer. I would just get dumbed down, basically. Like you would take a hammer and just boom. In a forehead, the person that is asking you, basically, without answering one anything, this is it. I don't have any other explanation for it. Dark. Because these people are gods. These are gods. These are not people. These are not commoners. This man saw himself together with Prince William, who also would dress himself in a similar custom to the one of uniformed police from New York. Yeah? Uh, he had some custom. If you want to call that a uniform, I am not going to refer to them wearing costumes as uniforms as I have no respect for these people whatsoever <coughs> that look just like the uniformed police officers from New York and New York is where they highly, a big apple is where they highly, according to them respect this royal family, that this is like the major place for them is in New York and have demanded from me to see even a police officer who is solving my problem rather than causing me harm. Uh, not at one, but many, many, many occasions. See himself as a police officer, see himself as a supreme judge, see himself as an owner of postal offices, the supreme commander of the British military, the supreme absolutely ruler of absolutely everything in Britain, 
which indeed he is. I am not disputing any of that. <laughs> I'm not disputing any of that. However, the people like this believed that frustration, pain, suffering, memories of torture, inability to move forward with a life due to constant problems would mark me on the internet in front of the people as mentally ill person and what better than labeling somebody as a paranoid schizophrenic is such a colorful uh, mental illness related uh, issues that flood the area of the schizophrenic Symptoms of schizophrenia include psychotic symptoms such as hallucinations, delusions, thought disorder, unusual ways of thinking, yes, as well as reduced expression of emotions, reduced motivation to accomplish goals, difficulty in social relationship, moral impairment, and cognitive impairment. And with continuous violence, A British royals even believed through the environment they would compel me to rely on, subsist, even they would get the proof about my being schizophrenic through the brain profiling. I would do the scan and they would get the ultimate proof about it based on abuse, based on torture, I would produce different brain from those of normal people. Today we know that never took place. Even they would love so much to get that stuff done. That would be like the ultimate proof the British royal families dream about it. And I must say that when delivered to this place here and told repeatedly by Camilla, he had Camilla, he would use Camilla, that I don't like him, she claimed. And I did not understand what the fuck she was saying about it. I did not like him. Oh, so I like him, I said. Of course I like him. What do you mean? Like, you're fucking saying, like, I don't know this guy or something like that. And that I don't like him. And he was just going with a head down, left and right, moving his head. That I don't like him. Now I said to myself, I didn't say to her, but I said to myself, you know, you little bitch, do you know who the fuck I am? You would not even be on a picture next to him if it wasn't for me. And that's true, I will tell you. I said to myself like that, you little ungrateful bitch. You would not be even on a picture next to him if it was not for me. Camilla, the queen, concert queen. I'm not going to use concert. I'm just going to say queen. I don't give a shit about this concert and this and that. It's on a picture because of me. I was the one who promoted Camilla all the time to Charles. There were many other beautiful ladies, all kinds of ladies, but I was the one who always gave Charles green light on Camilla. Uh, Charles was already between. 
But I was the one who insisted on Camila. I like Camila. I like her habits, her chips. She had a quite modest attitude and was quite... Uh, at, this, at the beginning, she was, sure enough, she was. She was really easy to deal with, as far as I'm concerned. For me, she was a friend. Easy to go along with. I'm going to put it this way. It was easy to go along with. Unless you would be malicious and you would give her trouble. Probably, which I don't know what the outcome would be, because I always was very nice to her. I had no reason. And she returned her, with her attitude, be nice with me. And when she said that to me, I said to myself, listen, hey, I know I'm young, but I have been on a picture for some very long time here. No longer than you, lady. Today, at least, I know that Camila didn't mean harm. At least I know that. I know. At least I know that it wasn't personal. At least I know that it was not uh, that she did not go uh, with with her malicious intentions. And the whole thing did not make no fucking sense. It didn't make any fucking sense. It didn't make any fucking sense because the whole thing did not make any fucking sense. Because yes, he definitely had his prostate done in 2016. Uh, it didn't make any fucking sense because I would uh, spend time with her while she would leave her house at the hospital. She kept me as a consort. She kept me as a company. She would use me to go with her to cheer her up. And I always did. I was really good at it. So I know that, that the procedure was done. She was, she was terribly depressed, destituted when Charles would stay in the hospital and she would go by herself home. She fell next to the driver like in a fucking empty car, like she didn't fit in there. And having me next to her, it gave her uh, a sense of, uh, maybe a sense of security, maybe a sense of feeling that this is where she should be. You know? And so, I, I didn't understand, you know, I didn't, when I said this, you know, you little bitch and this and that, I didn't mean exactly by you little bitch, you know, but I said to myself, you know, watch your tongue, you know, like this lady, you know, uh, I said to her, like, like what, what are you talking about? You know, what, what is this? I mean, like, I, 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 I would not go and confront these people directly, but I, I, I would suspect that maybe I'm on a wrong picture here. Like, I'm on a wrong father, like on a wrong fucking movie. Watch, I mean, you're talking about me like, I have not been around or something like that. Well, the thing was that in 2016, it was this man that I wanted to become a president of the United States of America because I wanted to end my case. He too was involved since my childhood. And I wanted to wrap this shit up as fast as possible and get over with it as fast as possible. I didn't want to be anymore on psychiatric pills, tortured by the Slovenian Supreme Court, by the Slovenian Parliament, through police, side courts, and advocates, or I should say defense attorneys that brought more charges against me than prosecutors did. Embarrassing me in court with lies, with more lies than what even the prosecutors would. You, you understand me? Lady, I had to stay alive. Maybe I can say survive 
but under no circumstances in 2016 I was making any fucking progress in respect to my case. I wasted immense amounts of time on somebody who totally was in bed with his people. Little I knew it was a game between them and between Donald Trump, Putin, and so on. But these people are always correct and do not rely on a single person. They don't rely on Joe Biden or Donald Trump. They rely on whichever way the wind blows. And so they, are, they always are in a position to stay correct. Even this individual I demonstrated in the United States of America was and as it appears on the front page, continues to remain as such on the picture. As you see right there, the Supreme Court extended the royal status today to Donald Trump, giving him an option to be either Joe Biden is spy when it comes to Russia, or even have open the possibility for Donald Trump to go on with new elections where he could become a major partner of future Vladimir Putin. So these people definitely do not make any options. These people always remain seemingly neutral and for supporting Donald Trump against what even mainstream media suggested. Murdoch Empire Rothschild basically I was deemed to be enemy I did touch the subject of the British Royals, and it was just done briefly. I sent them a message to shut up. I will no longer take your views in absolutely any way. You had, in other words, more than time enough to help me out to solve this case. You have not. So shut up, because on this picture, you no longer play the main role. That was the message in 2016 I had. And I do not support Donald Trump. I absolutely do not support Donald Trump. In 2016, however, I had. I thought he, was be, he would be a shortcut. The fastest way out of this problems. A fast ticket to freedom. He definitely, I was sure, would end the case, which just as I stated earlier, these are people who work together, did not. He became a president, Donald Trump. He became a president. I continue to remain prisoner of these people who, however, in 2016, through Camilla suggesting me and insisting me how he was even the man, the man you see right there, the man, not really the man, was the one who saved me from certain death, from psychiatry, and so on and so forth. That I should be grateful but that he is the one I wrote the news about him and it became clear I don't like him and so on and so forth something the couple knew very well was not true something I had no fucking idea what exactly they were talking about
and something that gave them platform for more crime against me. They were sure that I don't know what I'm talking about, what exactly I am. Uh, they were pretty much, they were pretty sure that even the stuff that I write is beneficial for them as they would come out as even more victorious and could even perform more crime, more abuse by proving that I did not even know what the fuck I was talking about. And I'm going to say to you again, Camilla, something that you too should understand very well in 2016. It was not about making gain. The case which I have already proven in 2010 was case of MK Ultra. When I video recorded locations in Sweden, in Karlstad, as MK Ultra locations, and was instead recognized by the people who were involved in MK Ultra as the one who won the case, just so I could be done, done more, more tortured, more destroyed at the request of Queen Elizabeth, who shook in anger every time I was delivered to Britain promising me a psychiatric treatment at any time, claiming that they will get you. And at just, even just before I failed with a political asylum request in Canada, never mind Germany, Belgium, where I filed for political asylum, Norway, <coughs> Sweden, <coughs> never mind, since this is about also Prince Anne, <coughs> Princess Anne, in Canada, Vancouver area, My job in 2016 was to stay alive, not even to make advancements, but to stay alive. Because staying alive meant definitely a victory for as long as I could delay, postpone, move on, push on. Stopped, I never stopped. What I started in 2006, and for what I thought it would be five years, it went on, it went on, it went on, mercilessly went on, but I also was the one who kept it up. I also was the one who was unwilling to give in. I also was the one who kept moving it, who kept pushing it, who kept pressing it, without a single thought in my mind would stop this at any time it's over or I simply drop dead and I think this is the concept to go about so if the death comes you don't actually even feel one whichever way but no other way so I have to tell you to both of you I was extremely disappointed in both of you for bringing up the subject of Donald Trump under my circumstances, circumstances which, which I literally eat, ate, was compelled by the police, by the courts, by the psychiatry to eat psychiatric pills. Had a difficulty to move my jaws due to liver damage, kidney damage, those medications would produce, could not even sleep. On the left side, Due to unbearable cardiovascular pain, I would suffer. I was overweighted. I have never seen a person that would suffer like this. person that could not move even jaws. And the saliva was running out of my mouth. I couldn't even fucking talk. And to make myself walk, I would have to go through unbearable pain for at least two miles before I would somewhat clean 
my liver that I would that I could return home get those five minutes of feeling better I was in unbearable pain I was in such a pain that I asked my mom to actually tie me on my bed because I felt I'm gonna fall into delirium from the physical pain I find it extremely disappointing that you resented me for what I believe was a ticket to the disillusioned with a democracy the way it functions. A ticket, a fast ticket to the freedom. I really, really resent you that you have used, attempted to use the opportunity to misrepresent yourself demanded for me to see you even as a savior as somebody who got me through from psychiatric hospital after everything you have done and i must say i was 41 years old when i was thrown into the psychiatric asylum ljubljana polia at request of these people to have got to even video record the whole event I sure enough never was the person that uh, <coughs> oh, it's um, how can I say <clears throat> you look so pathetic on that picture next to the words that I stated who wish anybody ever anything bad and or would even go to meddle himself in affairs of families I cannot will not refuse to lower myself to your level not to your status because you do have this status this special status in greater than Great Britain where you are entitled to such mistreatment and you're entitled to do as pleased whatever you want to do but I also want to warn you this is the picture I don't like at all I will not let you off the hook The dots that you see right there were a signal during MK Ultra. It would be related to the prison issues. And Charles, life is not composed out of. Uh, See this here? This is reality. Picture book. It's called a picture book. This is not what life is, mister. Life is not a picture book made out of your photos, which you interpreted whichever way you want it by holding me for my throat through the most severe sleep deprivation poisoning heart burning procedure life in my case if you have not noticed yet is a psychiatry
Nazis had their motto. Nazis had their say. They had their way. At the gates of Auschwitz, it was written Arbeit macht frei. You see it? That's what you would encounter as a typical prisoner at Auschwitz extermination camp on Dachau. Arbeit macht frei. Excuse me, not Dachau, but this was characteristic for Auschwitz. Equivalent to what you see right there. But I take pride in it. I like it this way. The prisoners who entered Dachau and Auschwitz began to hate this motto. It was actually used by Nazis to make people hate it. Something that is fact. The Arbeit macht frei. Works. Work liberates. It definitely liberates because you get pay, you get freedom, you get life. You see, the thing is, I work hard to get job, to keep employment, which I use to abuse. Did go to impossible to find employment, walk through entire cities. From door to door, not on on metropolitan big cities, in search and hope for work, sent thousands and thousands and thousands of job applications out there. And even contrary to the fact that life is definitely not a psychiatry, that's who the fuck you're dealing with, sir. I will tell you, life is psychiatry. You understand, Charles? Do you fucking understand? Life is psychiatry, sir. You're going to fucking remember me, you and your family, by this here. Life is psychiatry, and I salute one. I love it like I ate those fucking psychiatric pills. This here is what's going to mark your family. Life is psychiatry. As much as I hate those napkins, as much as I hate, dislike pictures like this, I told you, I'm the person, the last who would want to cause you harm in this world for what you knew very well. I could be taken even great advantage of. You will remember me by this here, by this. Life is psychiatry. Repeat after me. Life is psychiatry. I am not going to play you this song. Život je maskenbal. But if you like, you can do it yourself. I will just say to you, thanks for watching this video.
and say goodbye to you with the word psychiatrist pet stops had a big problem with during MPO talk. Suggested me now it will not be. Thanks for watching. Till next time.